a little while. The God of all grace, he has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish. Mm -hmm. It's 701. And uh, for those that I haven't met, I'm Sister Tracy Lynn. I'm filling in actually tonight for Reverend Ward, who wasn't feeling well. Um, so I got the call from Pastor today. So y'all give me some grace <laughs> <laughs> um, for for him. But uh, the Lord, the Lord will provide. And um, so we are picking up at chapter three. What we'll do is open in prayer and then dig in. Mm -hmm. All right. Heavenly Father, oh God, we thank you, merciful, merciful Father. We thank you, first of all, Lord, for just allowing us to arrive here safely. We, let, we thank you, Lord, for the technology that we have. So just keep connected with those who weren't able to make it. Lord, I pray that you would bless our studying of your word. Let our faith be increased by it, oh God. Give us each what we need as we come to your table, Lord. Feed us your word. Let us never be the same, oh God. You have given each of us gifts, oh God. So we pray that we will all be able to contribute in a special way, in whatever way we're able to tonight. Be among us and be within us, oh Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 All right, so um, what I'm going to do is just recap and then jump into chapter three. Can everybody online hear okay? Yeah. Thumbs up. Okay, good. All right. Yeah. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do a recap um, and then jump into chapter three. Um, so with, with Ruth, we're in the book of Ruth. We're going to highlight um, chapters three and four. So we know that the book of Ruth is a story about a family. They left their homeland of Judah, the husband, a wife, and two sons. They left because of a famine. And it's almost like they jumped from the, the, the pot to the, the frying pan. Because mm -hmm. they left the famine and then went to a land. And then they started having a stair step of tragedy. The husband died. Then the sons got married. And then they died. So Naomi, the mother-in-law, we know that she uh, makes up her mind to head back to Judah. Um, and she kind of gives her daughter-in-laws an out. You know, it's almost like she's putting herself in their place. Like, uh, you know what, if I was young, if I didn't have any kids, I don't know if I would want, let me just tell them, listen, y'all at the crossroads, you can either, I'm going this way, y'all can go that way. So one leaves, she's almost like, thank you. See you when I see you. Don't you, know, <laughs> you never ask, you know. Mm -hmm. So she, one leaves and one, Ruth, she stays. And she even vows to never be separated from her, only by death. We see that in, in chapter one, she says that. So this is like a faith that's in motion. She doesn't know what's ahead. She's following Naomi, doesn't know anything about what's in that land. That's walking by faith, you know. Mm -hmm. So then we get to chapter two and they arrive to Judah. Naomi has renamed herself. She went from Naomi, who means pleasant, to Mara, who means bitter. So they come to Judah. It's in a harvest season. Ruth is now considered a foreigner. She was in her native and now she's considered a foreigner. And she's quickly connected to the customs of this land. And in two, she asks permission of of Naomi, she kind of has this reverence, you know, may I go and, and glean, you know, so she pretty much like the provider now, like mm -hmm. I need to step up and show up, how are we going to eat, you know, how mm -hmm. we're, we're both widows, I'm able, let me get out here and try to eat, so she gets out there and she starts to glean, glean, and that's where um, it's a custom, it's like a built-in custom uh, for Israel that God put in place. And it's something where God was mindful of the poor and mindful of the widows. So it's like, uh, you know, if you're harvesting, you're collecting, mm -hmm. if you drop something, don't pick it up. Mm -hmm. Let the poor pick it up. Let mm -hmm. the widows pick it up. So this is Ruth. She's gleaning. She's going behind and collecting the droppings. Mm -hmm. So people are watching her, you know, and they have, they say your rep reputation precedes you. Mm -hmm. So uh, Boaz, who he's kind of like this, this, uh, this good employee.
employer, somebody you want to work for, because in chapter two, he's coming around and checking on everybody. How's everybody doing and everything? And who's that? Because that's not my employee. I don't know her. So you can tell by his character that he's paying attention to people. So he's like, who's that? And they are like, oh, she's a hard worker. She rests very little. She came back with Naomi. Look how she chewed her mother-in-law. And so mm -hmm. it's something to be said about her reputation, you know, in advance. Um, so um, he likes that because he's now he's like, okay, uh, well, let's hook her up. Give her some water, give her some food, all this kind of stuff. And he really puts a lot of things in place. So I just wanted to make a note about uh, character. Um, is who you are when no one sees you, but it's also who you are when there's no expectation of anything mm -hmm. in return. Mm -hmm. You have Ruth who's serving. She doesn't expect anything in return. Uh, Naomi can't do anything for her, but she's serving anyhow. And then you have Boaz who's showing this kindness to this foreigner. He doesn't know that's going to be his wife one day, but he's kind anyhow. He even blesses her on purpose. In chapter two, there's the line that says, chapter two, 16, it says, and pull out some of the head, he's giving instruction to his workers, and pull out some of the heads of the barley from the bundles and drop them on purpose for mm -hmm. her. And it's like, you know, mm -hmm. you've never been blessed on purpose right. by somebody. Right. That was just beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like, drop them on purpose, mm -hmm. favor. So she's like getting this favor mm -hmm. Um, for being good to a child of God, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then so, so she comes home. She's got the got the bringing home the bacon, mm -hmm. and and so, and she's in Boaz's field. And it's interesting how God would set it up to position her to be in then Boaz's field. That's not you know he's wealthy. He happens to be the redeemer. So um, so she is in Boaz still, and then they say he's the family redeemer. And I think you guys might have talked about this last weekend, but the, the family redeemer is the person that is allowed to volunteer to take on the responsibility of the family. Mm -hmm. So in this case, when a woman's husband dies, she could marry the brother or the nearest relative uh, to keep the family line going. And so Boaz is a family redeemer. Um, it's what they know of as the nearest relative. So now we're going to pick up. That was just a recap. It didn't take too long. There you go. <laughs> that was just a recap. So now we're picking up in chapter three. I'm just going to read verses one through ten. And then we can stop and have mm -hmm. our talk. Mm -hmm. So I'm out of the New Living Translation. One day, Naomi said to Ruth, my daughter, it's time I found a permanent home for you so that you will be provided for. Boaz is a close relative of ours, and he's been very kind by letting you gather grain with his young women. Tonight, he will be winnowing barley at the threshing floor. Now do as I tell you, take a bath and put on perfume and dress in your nicest clothes. Then go to the threshing floor, but don't let Boaz see you until he has finished eating and drinking. Be sure to notice where he lies down. Then go and uncover his feet and lie there. He will tell you what to do. I will do everything you say, Ruth replied. So she went down to the threshing floor that night and followed the instructions of her mother-in-law. After Boaz had finished eating and drinking and was in good spirits, that he laid down at the far end of the pile of grain and went to sleep. Then Ruth came quietly, uncovered his feet, and lay down around and lay down. Around midnight, Boaz suddenly woke up and turned over. He was surprised to find a woman lying at his feet. Who are you? he asked. I am your servant, Ruth, she replied. Spread the corner of your covering for me, for you are my family redeemer. In the last verse, verse 10, the Lord bless you, my daughter. Boaz exclaimed, you are showing even more family loyalty now than you did before, for you have not gone after a younger man, whether rich or or poor so that's uh just a snippet of chapter three mm -hmm. so this is strange advice that that naomi gave her but who follows it anyway 
And some say it's a custom for a servant to lay at the feet of a master. And others jokingly say, oh, this is the woman initiating a marriage proposal. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but Boaz recognizes her character. Um, and, and he even says, I know you are a virtuous woman. And I know pastor was leading us to this from Proverbs 31, that mm. Ruth is the virtuous woman. He actually mm. says that. I know you are a virtuous woman. Mm. Um, and, and while... Um, he seems grateful that she would come to him to redeem the family. We'll see later on that he remembers there's someone else closer in line that actually has the first right. Mm -hmm. So I'll just stop right here mm -hmm. and open it up. What are your thoughts on all of this so far? Mm -hmm. What do you think of Ruth, Naomi's instruction, mm -hmm. Boaz, anything mm -hmm. coming up for you? Mm -hmm. um, so to your point, well, I haven't, I'm using a study Bible today, but in verse 10 and 11, for the notes, it says, Boaz understood that Ruth was making a marriage proposal and praised her for not seeking younger men to marry. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that um, he acknowledged that she was, you know, kind of in a marriage proposal, mm -hmm. but then when you go back to Proverbs, and I can't remember this, that, but it says, he just responds to my response favorite in the Lord. So it's like, mm -hmm. it seems like there's a contradiction there that uh, like she's the one that's kind of presenting herself and they only saw her to present herself. And he acknowledged that was happening, but then in another scripture is, well, he should, he should have found her as mm -hmm. opposed to the other way around. So that was just interesting to me how that. Um, well, do you not think she found her when he not acknowledged her after the marriage? And he was like, that's the reason this for her. That? He already had his mm -hmm. sights on her. Right away, he, mm -hmm. like, he already knew her situation, yeah. he knew she was unwed, right? right? So he was like, She's out here doing whatever she has to do for the family. He's like, Maybe I can help her, mm -hmm. you know. So maybe the only thing I would say is that although she presented herself to him, he didn't have to take mm -hmm. he could have easily said, No, no, I think he understood. So even even though we say that men should find a wild wife, mm -hmm. if you don't present yourself in a way, right. mm -hmm. you can find someone, but then you're not presenting yourself mm -hmm. as godly as one right. like, as a woman of virtue. You right. can easily say, I thought you would have want to know. Going back to going back to But what I find what I what I found interesting is the whole point about not seeking someone younger. Mm -hmm. I mean, he 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 not only did he acknowledge that, it just it again talks about her virtuous virtuousness because she was really being obedient mm -hmm. to Naomi and mm -hmm. doing whatever she could to keep her uh you know, keep her character. But she could have easily said, Bill and Naomi, you want me to act all this. All right, I did come back with you. I'm I'm gleaning, I'm getting food. Mm -hmm. I don't need a man mom. <laughs> <laughs> but she also knew she didn't want to be gleaning for all her life either. Right. So she mm -hmm. understood the assignment um, mm -hmm. and didn't question. I don't know if I I can't necessarily say that I was not questioning. That's that's just me talking, but the fact that she was able just to follow the follow what was said to her it speaks mm -hmm. a lot and be so obedient that speaks a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I felt like in chapter three and then going into four, um, the loyalty, like I know it started from chapter one, but it was just the loyalty among all of them. Mm -hmm. Um for like reading this chapter. I realized like other chapters, it's always like God speaking a lot. And like, or it'll be like God said, or Jesus was saying, or told. Or this chapter was like more of a real life situation that still goes on today. Mm -hmm. And then it it kind of gave me the understanding of what it's like to be loyal to God through actions without like without speaking it's like well it's like god blessed and gave grace to all of them but it's not like usually when i'm reading a chapter it's like it reassures you like because god did that 
or mm -hmm. some way, but like it was reading this, it was like, it made me think like, they didn't mention God too much. And then it, then mm -hmm. I looked at the story and I'm like, it's all because they were being loyal mm -hmm. and uh, like walking mm -hmm. on the right path. For, and then that's, and then I felt like that was the faith mm -hmm. that God did mm -hmm. like, without speaking on it. Mm -hmm. like, um, and for Boaz, I just love the fact that he acknowledged her from the beginning and it had nothing to do with it. He just was, he thought it was very honorable of her, just how she was carrying it for Naomi. Mm -hmm. And then he saw that first. So I felt like there he protected her from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And it just gives you that husband quality, um, you know, the mm -hmm. things like you look for in a husband that he presented. And it's almost like I was proud. Um, I kind of looked up to Ruth at a point because I was like, look at her, not mm -hmm. picking the older guys, which she probably still thinks mm -hmm. a great job. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, the lie. That part, I was like, that's <laughs> that. if all of us could get that together, <laughs> that, that part hit deep for me. And I was, mm -hmm. I, I just thought it was incredible to just, you know, a lot of times, and I can say myself, I don't come, I haven't been lucky enough to come across a bunch of men my age that are walking this path. Mm -hmm. I can't say I've really experienced, I, got, yeah. I don't get too much, I can't say there's, it might be places out there, but mm -hmm. just to see that she went somewhere where I'm sure she could have picked from anybody, but mm -hmm. it's, it's about that loyalty. Mm -hmm. Like you're not looking at what that person, the money, their looks, their age, you just took that he was a protector and someone that believed in God. Mm -hmm. it was, that part made me really, like, I already loved her from the beginning where she mm -hmm. just, like, just tagged along and wasn't scared to figure out what was going to go. Right. But her making the choice of and being bold enough um, to try to save her family or redeem her family, it's that, like, hit home for me. I think, like, it's not always the things that we think are the kids, mm -hmm. really what's inside of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think um, I know when when I first read it, it sounds like it's like almost scary. Like me, I'm usually like very like you know a little like I don't know that seems a little you know. But to say go lay at the bottom of his bed and his feet, right. you know, like, and she said, and then she said, you're on your best dress. Right. Like you, it was like a show. So you're like, okay, I'm gonna do all yeah. this. I don't know the outcome. This right. like one of those things. Like I don't know what's gonna happen, but I'll do it. Can so, we speak on that part with you? Know, because she was supposed to be bitter, right? Yeah. right. Get her image. Do not encourage. Not they just mm -hmm. keep wanting you to be. That was another thing that came home. Mm -hmm. It's like not to say I just work with women that a long time ago, but they would be bitter or upset. And I didn't understand it. I have kids. I didn't understand what really comes with having to go to work and go home. Mm -hmm. And now I get it. And where I, I would take time for women that's bitter to like be in a pot, even if they don't want to take it every day. I, I learned that that's what they just need because they're going through something they can't get through. But I love how Naomi just, if you know you're bitter, you you marked it, you named yourself it, and then you just keep incurred, like, you didn't give up, though, mm -hmm. and I think that part for Naomi, I get rid of that, because she, she, she didn't, she was bitter, but she wasn't yeah, moving better, right? Yes, yeah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, and I think about um, the wisdom, and I know Reverend Ward was kind of touching on this in some of the previous um, discussions, like, it has she, Naomi must exude some kind of wisdom, you know, to be able to tell her to do this thing. I think she's, she has this wisdom that she has sized up the situation, you know, like, okay, Boaz has that. He, I think he like you, you know, so you, you got a shot. I'm gonna just tell you what you can do. And so it's like, she gave her the wisdom, the steps, the specific instructions. And, and then, um, yeah, that was that was a lot of really faith here of, of, of Ruth. Ruth. Naomi was her mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. And that's instruction that your mother would give you mm -hmm. if you were the daughter. So right. if you lost your husband and your mom said, Oh my God, you lost your husband, we gotta get you a new one. 
how many mother-in-laws have you mm-hmm. like, yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> right. 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 so right. take care of you and blah, blah. so that that's kind of weird that it's your mother-in-law encouraging mm-hmm. you to get be better mm-hmm. or get better mm-hmm. you know, so And like in the New Testament, I kept reading um, like just random verses here and there when they were just giving like lists of instructions, it would be like, and take care of the widows and take care of the widows and take care of the, you know what I mean? And I just, I'm not the kind of person that like understands context as much. Like I need like help with that sort of thing. So when I saw that, I was like, wait, why does it say that? Mm -hmm. And this story really does kind of illustrate why those sorts of things are important. Like these people in your community, they, they need you. They don't have like other people to help take care of them. So that's why that was just very enlightening to me to read this. So yeah. Think about like what systems do we currently have in place for widows? Are we mm-hmm. still that mindful of widows today? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And people don't have necessarily family, the family unit to take care of them and help them. Mm-hmm. So I did I point that out, I think, a little bit last week, like how important it is to have the church community, the body of Christ, these communities and stuff like that. Because when we don't have this, then we just have family, if that, mm-hmm. and maybe people at work. And who goes, who's going to take care of you at work? Who's going to mm-hmm. think about you that much at work? Who's obligated to? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, And it's loving of God to have that kind of thing built into mm-hmm. the ways mm-hmm. and the laws of his people. Right. He's thinking about the poor. He's thinking about the foreigner. He's thinking about mm-hmm. the widow. And he has that baked mm-hmm. into all of his instructions really yeah yeah Yeah. it's beautiful Mm -hmm. Um, i do want to point out the selflessness even though i know she does have something to gain from it but i think about how i think about how naomi thinks about others you know she's like go find a permanent home for you so that you will be provided for that's a lot of uh faith too because it's like you're going to leave my side you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then go take care of you I thought that was interesting mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. anything else before we move on um Pastor Montag you're unmuted did you want to say something am I still oh I'm unmuted yes because not only do we need to think about taking care of the widows but old people period mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and today um in our culture my wife and I was talking about a long time ago, people took care of their parents, their uncles, they kept them in their house and they cared for them till they died. Mm -hmm. Now we put people in facilities. Mm -hmm. I was watching TV recently and the American Indians and the uh, the Canadian uh, uh, um, native people, they take, when they hunt, after they get something, they share it with the elders. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. in our country, we need to, there's more that needs to be done through faith for the older people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Thank Mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Any more comments? 
<laughs> what he just said today. I went to the nursing home this morning for reading this chapter. Mm -hmm. And that's just crazy that he, he acknowledged that mm -hmm. because I do feel like, um, I, I just feel like we don't give elders enough credit um, mm -hmm. where it's like, we always want to think they don't know any, like they don't know how they, like they talk, they don't know because it's back then. Like what you're saying is not relevant now because it was different back then. Mm -hmm. But in reality, nothing has really changed. Mm -hmm. Like right. we making, we're making this a change where it's like, I wish we could go back because things would be a lot easier. Mm -hmm. But I did go see her, um, my, my grandmother's best friend, she lived with my grandma all the way into my grandma passing. So she fell and broke her hip back mm -hmm. in November. So unfortunately we did have to put her into a nursing home. But my grandma, she's not really related to me. Her name's Miss Irene, but um, we, she always stayed with her. My grandma lost my grandpa when I was 10. So mm -hmm. them two, they just, they stayed. And it's like that part, and I'm not have to cry because that part to see two women and my grandma, mm -hmm. she never remarried. Mm -hmm. She stayed in her word, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. never had a boyfriend. And I can't speak of women. I can't even really say many women that I know. And that's it. I, and I just, I, I respect that so much mm -hmm. because my grandma didn't search for new love, didn't search for a man's attention. And it's just now, I just wish I had to talk to her just to feel to where I'm smart enough now and can get it because I just wish I could just really hear her really mm -hmm. tell me something because I know mm -hmm. and it's just like now I get it like she she was so in love with God she mm -hmm. was so in love with Jesus mm -hmm. and she used to always say it to me like mm -hmm. and I it never clicked like she like randomly I remember with my sister's first mother saying she's like you gotta know who loves you best is Jesus mm -hmm. like she like don't Stop looking for love. Stop looking for right. someone to love you. And she randomly just said it to me. And right. I started crying at her kitchen table. But I was just like, how'd she know I'm over here chasing when they chase <laughs> 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 I was like, I'll never forget that. I'll put that at you. It's like, how did she know that? <laughs> and, uh, I'll never forget that day she was just cooking it. But she said it. And she's not even looking at me saying it. And she's like, no, who loves you best is God. Mm -hmm. And being in Bible study, it's like, mm -hmm. I get her now. Mm -hmm. yeah. I wish I could have embraced it while she was here, but I understand exactly why, mm -hmm. why I'm blessed is because of my grandma. Like, right. I really get why my family okay is because of her. And mm -hmm. I, it's, it's such an honor to like read something and, and like this chapter made me respect the elders the elders that believe in God and mm -hmm. follow his word they have a lot of knowledge that I just I can now mm -hmm. really hear it before I just mm -hmm. I, I missed so much of it because I I didn't know no better mm -hmm. and now it's like mm -hmm. this um definitely for Naomi it's just the I love that those elders, you guys will encourage us no matter what you think. Right, of. right. And I, th I think we underestimate how mutually beneficial mm -hmm. these relationships can be. It's not just important for us to get their wisdom. You know, it's also very, very um, touching for them that somebody cares for them yeah. at that point in their life. That's why I love how God's instruction like really is supposed to be beneficial for every single person. And we mm -hmm. see this in the story of Ruth, mm -hmm. how it wasn't just beneficial for Naomi to have someone to take care of her. It was, it wound up being beneficial for Ruth to, mm -hmm. to keep her word, to keep loyal to Naomi. How uh, she ended up getting married and then, you know, down the line mm -hmm. wound up being God's divine plan for Jesus actually. Amen. Right. Amen. Let's read on um, a little bit more in chapter three. Verse 11, this, these are Boaz's words, and maybe we can hear from some of the men in the room. Uh, <laughs> so this is, um, these are Boaz's words in chapter 3, verse 11. This is his response to her uh, being um, at the foot, uh, you know, waking up to her. He says, now don't worry about a thing, my daughter. I will do what is necessary, for everyone in town knows you are a virtuous woman, but while it's but while it's true that I am one of your family redeemers, there is another man who is more closely related to you than I am. Stay here tonight in the morning 
and I will talk to him. If he is willing to redeem you very well, let him marry you. But if he is not willing, then surely as the Lord lives, I will redeem you myself. Now lie down here until morning. So anything come up about, you know, what you're hearing from Boaz's character? I mean, some wow. Did I hear that? I said, wow. Well, okay. Again, what you were saying about being like a husband. I'm a protector. I know there's someone mm -hmm. that should have you. But you stay here. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to talk to him tomorrow. If he doesn't want you, I'll take you. That's a quality. Gentlemen, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious to know what would have happened if he hadn't done that. Right. I guess I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing he would have been scorned. He probably would have lost things because mm -hmm. he jumped the, you know, mm -hmm. he jumped the level oh, that right, he was supposed right, to. Right, right. Um, and it's interesting that he he could have and he could have easily did that. Mm -hmm. Who would have known? Who would have been the wiser? Mm -hmm. We saw it uh, back in the. Um, you know, but at any rate, you know how the some of the, well, the cannon angle, someone jumped before the other, or, or whatever. But mm -hmm. we've seen that in 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 the Bible where, where it happens. men haven't been as genuine as they should have been, mm -hmm. where they uh, they you know presented themselves as something that they weren't, and the fact that he still, regardless of everything that was going going to happen or he could have easily said I'm going to marry I'm, I'm I'll going take to, I'll take you mm -hmm. he said I'm still going to do the right thing yeah, yeah. and get clarification 100 percent before he tried to do anything so you right. just stay right here right 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 because I don't want no problems right. 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 and I think the idea that he didn't say go home and I'll get right. back to you he mm -hmm. said stay here mm -hmm. like basically I'm gonna protect you when I get the right answer I'll tell you what you did. So yeah. that was valuable. <laughs> yeah, I want to say something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to say that uh, he was a man in bed and a woman was at the foot of his bed and he didn't he didn't ravish her. He didn't say, come on and get in my bed. He honored the tr whatever he honored her and said, everybody in the town knows you're a virtuous woman. But we know he didn't have to honor her. No. Wow. That's she was at the foot of his bed. Mm -hmm. right. And, um, you know, what would that mean today? Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> That's powerful. <laughs> that but at, at that time, uh, he did what he was supposed to do. He was a, uh, not only was she a virtuous woman, but he was an honorable man mm -hmm. and a man of God. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. And a man also of restraint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's a so I just wanted to yeah. say that. That's mm -hmm. a powerful point. There's a difference. And that really, that's like an example for us that are, you know, single. With, you can see the difference. Like that is what a man of God does. He honored her. He didn't mm -hmm. take advantage of her. Mm -hmm. He had restraint. Mm -hmm. right. All those kind of things. That's right. powerful. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't see that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was what I was thinking of is he could have and bringing that up, he could have he could have did what happened to Tamar. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what happened to Tamar. He just they just took a, he took advantage of her. Mm -hmm. And he could have easily did that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he didn't. He didn't. And I, I wonder yeah. uh, to that point, I wonder if you know, so we go back to the wisdom of the elders because honestly. They only put her in that place. She did. And so I wonder if she had wisdom enough to say, I know him. He's not going to go beyond mm -hmm. what he needs to go beyond. And you're going to be protected. Mm -hmm. um, so that she knew his character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. That, that also reminds me of the elders. Like, I have so many times my mom will tell me who I need to talk to, and then I go talk to the one that she did. <laughs> <laughs> Like, maybe be her man. And mm -hmm. then I'm like, 
sheesh, like <laughs> the best important thing is he <laughs> believed in God. He, yeah. Like, and it, it, it just like for a, a single woman or a woman that like reading that, the house, what she's choosing, it almost shows you like, you're not supposed to be choosing for what's in front of you. Like mm -hmm. you literally need to get to know that person. And you need to, I've had conversations with my girlfriends and we're like, and he needs to know God first. Mm -hmm. It's like, even though I'm 31 and I'm now, so I wish that's like, you had a while ago. <laughs> but I'm like, he needs to know God first. Like, and, and those are the questions that I will ask when I'm getting to mm -hmm. know someone. And mm -hmm. I try not to get too judgmental for their different religion. It mm -hmm. has made me have to like start to learn more um, mm -hmm. about different religions, but. It is a question that mm -hmm. I've thrown on the table. And mm -hmm. as soon as you mm -hmm. just don't say that, I'm just not even there anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't keep the, I still treat them nicely, but it's still like in my head, I'm like, this, this is a good check. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I agree with that. Because you're right. Know. Lord, and you're right. I don't know. My husband, he was my husband at the church. He got away, he got away from. And then, you know, he, it was in him, but you know, the Bible used to hand him a child. But it was in him, he used to go church with his grandparents. But, you know, when he started it, it was like, okay, Lord, you got to come to my dad's church. You got to come to church with me and hang out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm not saying that they could be anybody's situation. <laughs> but, you know, it's true. It, yeah. Just like the story that Samson said about the man, he didn't want to give his brother in law the chance because he didn't want to come out of jail. Mm -hmm. But, lo and behold, in jail, he found God. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying, you know, don't cut don't just cut them off because right. mm -hmm. you never know. That's all you should always use that opportunity to invite somebody to discipleship. Right. Every single That's true. Mm -hmm. to try to invite somebody. Because I think a lot of times as Christians, the Muslims and a lot of other religions, they, they, everybody always feels like, oh, they're always pushing their religion on us. We don't push our religion enough. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I, I'll be excited to talk to you about the Holy Spirit. I'll be excited about the Pentecost. I'll be excited. Like, yeah. I'll, you mm -hmm. have to. Like, that's why we come here. Like, mm -hmm. I'm breaking my neck. I'm like, I gotta get out of here. I try to get out of here. <laughs> because I missed this when we were down for the pandemic. Yeah. So, you know, don't ever count somebody out because they don't. Because, like I said, you can always extend an invitation mm -hmm. to come with them. You never, mm -hmm. you never know. Right. Somebody's got to be like, well, you know what? I am so interested in this sister. And on top of that, look at what she she she, she said to me. She ain't say, oh, we want to go to the club. Mm -hmm. She ain't asked about your finances. She asked about God. Mm -hmm. So therefore, that might make him interested. You never know. I don't, you know. That, I, I agree. I just feel like I'm running out of time. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just, I just said, I was like, these are the questions I was looking for before. Now, as a friend, yeah, I'm willing to take one any friend. The female, male, like, I'm willing for that. It's just me. Like, I need some more. I, I need a go and you be praying to God, not to me. You need to be asking God to tell him, God, gonna say nothing. Mm -hmm. You got to change your prayer up. And you, <laughs> God, this is what I want. You need to be Listen, God, cool with time, huh? Can, can, I, can I say this? I was praying so heavy for my son's dad, um, my, his dad, um, to find God. I, he grew up, like, he'd been in church before. So I was like, by God, he did have to do a little time when I had my son. Um, then when he came, and when he came out, he found God, and I was so, I was like, yes, Lord, you won't you do it. Mm -hmm. Then he started, like, the Muslim, and then it's like, now we arguing, because, and that's all it gets us. And I, then, so then for me, I'm like, hey, it made, God knows his heart, so God's going to work through that. I continue to pray for him, because mm -hmm. maybe he, I mean, I don't want to say he's praying, but like, I, if you're in it and you're finding out and you're praying, I'm not going to change But since that. you're praying for God, since, since, since you got to pray to God, you got to say right here, like, we got to run. We got to get ourselves virtuous, right? I, I wasn't, but when my husband was ready for me, I wasn't ready for him. Mm -hmm. I knew him. I knew him for years and years. But I was, I, I wanted to still be single. <laughs> like, <laughs> I wanted to live my best single life. And, Thank you know. You. You know what I'm saying? Like you gotta, yeah. it's just, we, it's just, we were just saying it. Like you gotta be right. Like when you come, when when God is in it, it's just that's just what it is. Right. Now when like, you start praying and you be like, you know what? I'm I'm telling you, as soon as I stop worrying about it and I just was just in my word and I wasn't, things just fell into place. I mean, it's just like and I think with 
Naomi, because this is my favorite story in the Bible. I mm-hmm. love love story. I love mm-hmm. a good love story. Mm-hmm. This is my favorite book. And I try to keep quiet because I want to hear other people. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's just so much like, I think with the mother-in-law, I think she just had that spirit of discernment. She knew. She mm-hmm. knew what was, what she knew. You know how the Bible is already like, it's so futuristic. Like, she, mm-hmm. I just feel like she already, it was discernment. She was the spirit of discernment. Just like you said, Jay Grandma, she never looked up because it's that spirit of discernment. I often pray like, you know, God help me, help me with that, like I want to be able to discern it, like the things that I need to see. Like I sometimes my heart is just so compassionate. I see, I see mm-hmm. people, I see people good even though they don't mean me good. I just mm-hmm. want, I just want it to be good. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. like I mm-hmm. feel like with it, with Naomi, that's what it was. She just she already had that discernment for what was going, what was mm-hmm. going before. Mm-hmm. Which she saw before we could see it. She mm-hmm. she had. Uh uh-uh. Your God is going to be my God. Mm. Right? Mm. What did she do? She put God first. She go. wasn't worried about finding a new husband and stuff like that. She wanted that God. She was like, no, I want to see Naomi people. Like, mm. she saw that God in Naomi, and she that's what she wanted because she's a Moabite. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. her husband was, uh, I, like, when I say this, my favorite book, I read the Up Series of Barbara. They don't say this. <laughs> <laughs> If you get some time, Google it. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, the other part, like, it, it, it tells you, like, about, like, how she grew up. Like, she was a orphan. You know what I mean? Like, this this really is my favorite chapter. So, oh, I, she, she, once she put God first, she's like, no, when that's, like, that's the part that stuck out to me. She's like, no, I want my God to be your God. Mm-hmm. But she knew she put God, she put God first. And, and the that, thing that, about that, this, I want to say, is that, you know, we're, they're, their relationship with God through the trials and through the challenges, you know, they've lost a whole lot and they didn't let go. She's willing to change her name to bitter, but she didn't let go. Um, They're holding on to God. And it's like, you know, God differently when you have to know him through some challenges and yeah. through some trials and everything. And, and it's like, they held on to God, God held on to them. And this is like the reward after you know after all that he's he's watching the character like what do you do when you're with your mother-in-law and you don't have any money will you still serve what do you do you know Boaz um with this woman who's virtuous who's in your bed and you know nobody's around will you still be uh, will you still be calm will you still be godly will you still honor her you know when nobody's looking and all these kind of things that you oh, yeah. can see I want to look at a uh, chapter. Let's move on to chapter four. Mm-hmm. Really good discussion. Chapter four. Um, Boaz is now sealing the deal as a family redeemer, and he's acquiring Ruth as his wife, um, and he purchases the land. Um, we're going to notice how Naomi ends up. Like she came into this bitter, but how she ends up. And I want to look at like let's look at nine through ten, and then we'll skip to thirteen to fifteen. So uh, Ruth chapter four, verses nine and 10. This is Boaz after he's resolved all of the Redeemer uh, thing. He's resolved things with the, the, the relative that was actually had first dibs. Mm-hmm. And now he's in. It says, then Boaz says to the elders and the crowd standing around, you are witnesses today that I have bought from Naomi what? all the property of Elimelech, Kelon, and Malon. And with the land, I have acquired Ruth, the Moabite widow of Milan, to be my wife. This way, she can have a son to carry on the family name of her dead husband and to inherit the family property here in his hometown. You are all witnesses today. And then we skip down to verses 13, uh, reading to 15. It says, so Boaz took Ruth into his home home and she became his wife while he slept with her the lord enabled her to become pregnant and she gave birth to a son then the women of the town said to naomi praise the lord who has now provided a redeemer for your family may this child be famous in israel may he restore your youth and care for you in your old age for he is the son of your daughter-in-law who loves you and has been better to you than seven sons. So um, Naomi originally looked at her life in verse one or two, I think it was. She said, uh, it, things were so bad at that point. She said, it's like God had raised his fist against her. But now look at her. They're saying she has a daughter-in-law that's better than seven sons. 
And I saw a commentary note that really stood out to me. It said, out of sorrow, God can bring great blessings. I wanted to know, does anybody have any experience with that or any, any other thoughts that come up for you um, on chapter four? Well, that's um, to the point of uh, how in the, how in the beginning of Naomi, she kind of has her eyes for herself, but it's, it's almost like God brought her full circle because now people are praising her. Mm -hmm. um, in uh, chapter 4, verse 14, then the woman said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord who has not left you. This day without a close, without a close relative. So it's like now she's getting this announcement. Now she went from, you know, the Willow who lost her children. Oh, what was you? You know, mm -hmm. poor little thing. To oh, look what God did for you. So mm -hmm. it's just amazing how, you know, sometimes when we just stick in there, we don't know how God's mm -hmm. going to bring it back full circle for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even how they close in a gap, and I, I might be missing. The part about the relationship between um, Naomi and uh, Boaz, but how they're acknowledging this child that um, Ruth is having as like her grandchild, mm -hmm. kind of really negating the fact that honestly this child mm -hmm. don't have mm -hmm. no, no no blood no, no, really right. at all because mm -hmm. you know. But how again, it's bringing it back full circle. I'm like, okay, now you lost, but here is your opportunity to be to restore to be restored. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Ruth thought the same thing things looked like for her too. Yeah. When she lost her husband and then Naomi was getting ready to leave, then she was going to separate mm -hmm. from Naomi. I think that she probably she knew that Naomi knew what to do. And evidently it was the custom for women to get dressed up and, and then go lay at I guess a man's feet mm -hmm. to be taken care of. Because that's basically mm -hmm. what they Mm -hmm. One, it was to be taken care of yep. and to have a, I guess, to get for Ruth to get married to, well, not get married, mm -hmm. and then have a child to take a son mm -hmm. to take over and continue mm -hmm. their, their family mm -hmm. um, legacy. So I'm sure that Ruth looked at it from looking at a very dark part of her life to now I have security, I have a home, I have food, my mother-in-law is taken care of, mm -hmm. I have a husband and, 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 and a child. I so know. I'm sure, that, you know, she might have looked at her that way. Also. Yeah. And, she, and she might have also, in the beginning, felt like when she decided to go with Naomi, um, because I, I have, I, I never, um, so I've, I've looked into the backstory as well and how she was a woman. So honestly, in, in her thinking, she really could have been thinking like, what is my options? Either I'm going to go with this woman that I know and serve her dad. This means, you know, I mean, like we dealing with some heartache and stuff, but it's her God and she believes that she trusts in her God or am I going to go back to the life that I once lived, which was worse than this, you know, mm -hmm. so at that point, she really probably felt like, I don't really have much choice, mm -hmm. and, you know, and sometimes, we, you know, we do, um, you know, God does sometimes put, well, not so much, I mean, I'm not going to put that all on her, but, you know, sometimes our back is against the wall, but it's something, oftentimes, it's the road that leads us right directly to where we need to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think about um, what you just said, um, I can't remember his name. Katana. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, what you just said about Ruth, because I don't know that they had fields and all this wealth, because she's like now wealthy now. You know, she when they when they left the Moab, they didn't have. You know, we didn't hear anything about them having servants and fields. Now she's the wife of somebody that has employees and staff and all this kind of stuff. So her life has done a whole 360. Mm -hmm. And and that's amazing. Like, you know, just walking mm -hmm. in faith mm -hmm. and 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 being patient, you know, not really knowing what's around the corner, mm -hmm. you know, but mm -hmm. walking anyway. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can I say something? Yeah, please. Well, part of the bottom line is God came through. Amen. God came through and blessed her and all the things lined up. Yes. Mm-hmm. And they don't have to line up in our lives. Mm-hmm. And God has come through for me and my wife uh, mm-hmm. when and had things line up and they didn't have to line up. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Thank you. He mm-hmm. came through. He came through. And I like this last uh, sentence. Well, this last 16 to 17. It says, verse 16 and 17, it says, Naomi took the baby. This is the baby that Ruth had with Boaz and cuddled him to her breast, her grandson, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. and she cared for him as if he were her own. And she cared, yeah, she, and she cared for him as if he were her own. The neighbor women said, now at last, Naomi has a son again. And they named him Obed. He became the father of Jesse and the grandfather of David. Mm-hmm. Powerful. Mm-hmm. And we know David. So Naomi was uh, David's grandmother or great grandmother. Yeah, yeah, great grandmother. What a great honor! And I thought about the fact that how this book get put in between all of this history. Right, right, mm-hmm. right. You know that we Joshua judges, and then they come to Ruth, and then after Ruth, it's First and Second Samuel. So there's history before and history after. God put this book in here that we might have some sensitivity to how people have been treated at those times and wow. what a man should be like, what a woman should be like, mm-hmm. and how God will come through mm-hmm. even in a time of difficulty. Even in like a that. time of difficulty. Like Amen. Mm-hmm. Yes. We get to see that character example. Mm-hmm. The character example. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's also a contrast on what we learned in Genesis women are being treated. This of taking one wife, of being loyal to one person. Mm. I mean, in Genesis, we saw a lot. Right, <laughs> a lot going on. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. I, I also think about when he said he was going to tell everyone how virtuous of a woman she was. It's that reminder that we've been learning in Bible study, like, the, what's your tongue? Like, like putting that out, it, putting that out there. So it's like, even though he didn't know yet that was going to be his wife, he still made sure that because he knew the good, he was going to share it. And I, I feel like um, a lot of us don't always give that credit to people, and whether it's a male or female, it's just like it's always good to speak the good for to someone because you don't know what opportunity that's going to lead for them. And I, maybe his intentions in his head were. I'm going to speak godly of her, but to for someone else to find her, to help her for her needs. But it's just how God works when you're following. I felt like it was like God made sure um, he, he, she, he spread that word for her needs in a way like where we're reading it and we thought it was all Boaz, but it was like, God bless Boaz to be that type of man that I felt like he set that mm-hmm. set set her up for greatness, whether mm-hmm. if Boaz did or did not. Mm-hmm. And I think that was also his thing. Um, he was going to do what he could do to have, make sure they were safe or protected. Mm-hmm. Yep. Even if it wasn't Mary. Yeah, it seemed like he he appreciated how she was looking out for her mother-in-law. Yeah, like I admire how you are looking out for your mother-in-law. You don't even have to do that. Just give her, give her, take care of her. All those kind of things. I wanted to share the the definition of redeemer. Some of the definitions and and think about it as Jesus as our redeemer says. One of the definitions is. Uh, to pay for the faults or bad aspects of something. Redeemer also means atone or make amends for something, gain or regain possession of something in exchange for payment. And so when we think of like Boaz being their family redeemer and how Jesus has paid for us and now we're his bride, you know, that Mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Through through his... um, through the through his blood shed on the cross, that was his payment for us. He's our Boaz, you know, mm-hmm. and, and we are 
mm-hmm. we are his bride we are mm-hmm. his, you know and he had they have he had paid for us mm-hmm. in that way too i wanted to make sure we we acknowledge that um any other highlights or takeaways mm-hmm. that this word is speaking to you tonight? We talked a lot about Ruth and Boaz, their character, um, marriage proposals, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, all it kinds like of things. It was a sense of honor. Mm-hmm. And, and this mm-hmm. one, just yeah. honoring God, honoring tradition, mm-hmm. and, you know, things like that. Just a lot of honor. There. Yeah. So, Mm-hmm. And we're so far from that because um, I just had a conversation. You know, when you talk about the life, people always have their own perception. Mm-hmm. And we were talking about honoring our mother and father. Mm-hmm. And the person said to me, It promised your days would be long, but it didn't promise that your days would be good. Mm-hmm. My comeback was whenever we're talking about God and honor, there's always a reward. Mm-hmm. So right. if you think about honor at all times, if you're honoring, something you're going to be rewarded in some right. way right. so you don't need to have people need to write on the wall well he right. said all my days would be long but i need him to say all my days would be good and long really? i never would have a problem and yeah. all my days are going to be wonderful that's not what wow. you're mm-hmm. but you believe that god is in it and it's honor then you're going to be rewarded mm-hmm. you know so that's how i look at this chat a whole lot of honor to this stuff. and it was a good outcome you know? right mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. Anybody else? Any other thoughts? <coughs> yeah, any messages in the chat? Um, just from earlier, um, mom said something about how needs aren't just necessarily physical, like it's not just the, the food that and all those other things that Naomi needed. It was also those emotional connections that you need mm-hmm. when you're in that position. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The love that Ruth had for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, special, yeah. very special. Oh my god, she mm-hmm. really loved her. Mm-hmm. She mm-hmm. did. That's a that's a rare form. Like mm-hmm. that was mm-hmm. she preferred this because she lived the rest of her life with her mm-hmm. wherever she was going. Yeah, right? yeah. Did not go back to her own. Mm-hmm. But there was no one back there. Think about it. She had a mother and father back there. She was mm-hmm. so she kind of took Naomi on as a mother mm-hmm. instead of a mother in law. Well, her sister was back there because she could have went. Where she left. Yeah. So anybody to leave you? <laughs> <laughs> she could have said, "Come on, yeah. let's go." She did. She said, "I have a choice. I can go." Mm-hmm. She could have stayed with her sister as well and with Naomi. Mm-hmm. She was like, oh, "Obviously, she was an orphan as well, right?" So no, she was a sister, 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 right? And they said, so so she, yeah. like, she was not right. She was the sister yeah. to the other mm-hmm. one, right? Mm-hmm. So she said, "Bye." Right, so right. Together as a threesome, mm-hmm. but she's like, you know, I know better. I'm out of here. I'm gonna leave. I mean, but I will, I'm, I will give her some credit. She was, she tearfully left. Mm. But she, had, yeah, I mean, she, she was like, go. She was gonna make time. She got to leave y'all. Go back to yeah. Like she, yeah, she might have had right. She was the sister-in-law. Right. She like, all right, well, you know, I'm just gonna make up my mind. I'll go back to my family. I got to be, you know what? Go ahead, we got nobody. Right. 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 Mm-hmm. And because she was an orphan, it's like she took on Naomi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And plus, and if you, I don't know yeah. where, where I read it, okay. and, but it's also um, with Ruth, you know, when she was a mobile, you know, they would be able to like sacrifice her and stuff. Like she didn't come from like a, a place, her, her, her background, she was like in a abusive background. Mm-hmm. Too. So no, you look back, back there. Call, right. Jesus looked better. Mm-hmm. Like if it could have been, uh, you know, everything that, everything on that other side was real for real mm-hmm. because, you know, her background where it came from. And I think she just, I, I also just feel like it's like this, like this whole genealogy, like they didn't do that. She, it was it was the spirit, the Holy Ghost, like you know what I mean. The Holy Ghost, she knew. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, she knew like, she how the Holy Ghost, you know. Sometimes you'd be like, it's, it's better just to be with her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, even though you did. But yeah. is that the thing of also like not walking in fear? Like what yeah. is that that we get so caught up in like thinking? How we're going to play it out because we think but about it, and then instead, it's I, I think like I feel like for Ruth, that's just like she got me like, at the end of the chapter. Right? I'm like, look how it just worked out for her, but it's just like she just she was that positive. She like if I could see them, I felt like she was that one that was always like I just this. Think, I just think she was so pretty. I don't think it was like, <laughs> like, so pretty. Like I don't know for some reason I just kept just like when I think of y'all, I look like. 
like so free. Like she could just she just have any way she wanted. Like you know, it was like it was, it was she chose yeah, mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah she right. like, you know, everybody's mine, but, like, right i felt like her connection though where those other guys she could have had anybody i felt mm-hmm. like because they weren't in tune where she was at mm-hmm. they weren't seeing mm-hmm. that beauty even though i feel like yeah. how what you were saying like she was just flawless but mm-hmm. they just it was no and then it like makes you learn like that that connection the attraction is nothing compared to connection yeah, yeah. it's like for just to read that, I'm like, it means it brought attention to me for that, but it's not that connection. And I felt like Boaz just, it was every single time he described her, it was about all the things she did for somebody else. And it's like, I I feel like I'm a type of person, like you said, you'll always see the good and you'll just keep trying to see the good. I feel like that was the beautiful part of this someone else. They would not be a redeemer. Okay. She was looking for a redeemer. She yeah. knew what she was doing. The other things that she might have here are kind of like the men we mainly meet today. today. You know, mm-hmm. not always our redeemer. That's going to take care mm-hmm. of, of, of us. Right. Naomi yeah. yeah. knew what she needed. Yes. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So. I want to like, don't go date the other people. Yeah. 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 Or maybe that was what? the last word for me. <laughs> 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 I don't know what I mean. Let me know what people are, whoever is watching And you are. But to see the God in you. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes that's what we all people also. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. you know, we, of course, we want to. Let me ask this one question. Um, what before we close? What connection do you see uh, with Ruth in Proverbs thirty-one, the virtuous woman? Do you see anything mm-hmm. that reminds you of maybe what we talked about in terms of a virtuous woman? Oh, yes. mm-hmm. what, what do you see? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, just being virtuous, she's trying to take care of. Mm-hmm. Uh, not only herself, but mm-hmm. take care of Naomi, trying to make sure she's fed. Mm-hmm. Um, she yeah. has a place to live because now Naomi is saying, I've got to find a place for her to live, you know, right. so that she can take care of herself. Yeah. But yeah, I would say she was definitely mm-hmm. a virtuous mm-hmm. woman. She was trying mm-hmm. to put actually Naomi ahead of herself. Mm-hmm. But she didn't listen to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was putting her ahead of herself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So for Proverbs, I feel like I was just righteousness. Mm-hmm. Uh, Naomi sent her. Mm-hmm. She sent her purity. Mm-hmm. Like when she went, she did exactly what she said. Because she could have went and be like, hey, Boaz, I'm here. Mm-hmm. That would have been a whole different thing. That a whole different, that's, a, story. that's a whole different story. Right? Okay. Then being innocent and laying there mm-hmm. and not being so provocative. Mm-hmm. You know, then she just went and, and was righteous. Mm-hmm. So we get that from Proverbs. Mm-hmm. Right. I think I about I think about uh, the scripture um, in Proverbs when he said uh, the husband robbed and the calls are blessed. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. That was definitely seen in the future. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think about her hard work. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. yeah, I think about her hard work because I think they talk about how she Verse wakes 17. up. Is it? 17? Verse 17. So she's an energetic, yep. strong, she's energetic and strong, a hard work. Yeah, I think about that uh, because, you know, she was, that's, that was part of her reputation when Boaz asked, who was that? They was like, oh, she's working hard. She don't mm-hmm. even really sleep. Right. You know, right. she's right. Right. <laughs> That's her resume, right? <laughs> <laughs> and she watches for bargains. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Sure she not wasting. Yeah, yeah there you and go. She was gleaning. Yeah. That's like coupons, you know. Yeah. <laughs> And everything, so I feel like we do see that connection in mm-hmm. there, mm-hmm. and that's just a beautiful thing, you know, mm-hmm. to just kind of be called that, you know, by, and to be observed that mm-hmm. way. Another thing that's interesting in Proverbs 23, mm-hmm. her husband is well known at the city mm-hmm. gates where he sent to the other civic leaders. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Will, yes, mm-hmm. he's well known. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, mm-hmm. so we do see that connection. Uh, and her children stand and bless her, and her husband says, so, Yeah, so there you do see that connection. Um, okay, so we are at so one thing that okay. says she dresses like all royalty, mm-hmm. you know, the finest cloth. Mm-hmm. Uh, that may not 
necessarily. Which really mm -hmm. cool. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I mean, you still could be referred to as woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, but not right. necessarily dressed as mm -hmm. woman. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 You know what? And then. Well, can you use that? Because the thing that is the Russian word, could it be characteristic? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily. It it could if be. we don't just necessarily think physically, but you mm -hmm. just think also, like, it could be your characteristic being the Russian. Because it says grill on TV gowns, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. of the finest cloth, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. says that she is dressed for well. what you can get. Oh, yes, the question. <laughs> 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 It's a character. It's a character trait. Um, and he also says in 27, uh, she carefully watches everything in her household and suffers nothing from laziness. So we know that she was working hard, mm -hmm. not resting. Mm -hmm. So I definitely see that connection. I, I and I'm glad that Pastor had, you mm -hmm. know, wanted to point that out and make that connection between this and 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 yeah. Ruth. Yeah. Um, yeah, so what I see in the time of the story is somebody mentioned Western beautiful or everything that stinks, but that wasn't the case because it's the fear of the Lord that was the main thing. Mm -hmm. It's the most important in this story mm -hmm. because you know, so she obeyed what was said, mm -hmm. like somebody said that she could have went there in a different way, but she laid at his feet. That was. Mm -hmm. Humbleness, yeah, from being obedient to what her mother law has said. And so that brings to my mind it says, Bridging is in vain, and, um, and um, favor is in vain, but the one who fears the Lord shall be praised. Yeah. And that's what we see at the end of the story. You see yeah. her being praised because why? She feared the Lord. And yes. so that's the most important that stood out to me in this whole story. That's God. beautiful. Yes. Yes. That note. <laughs> He is 808. I think that's a good mm -hmm. note to end on the fear yeah. of the Lord. Yeah. 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 Um, so, oh no, that's okay. Mm -hmm. So we can get ready to close out in prayer. Um, maybe just I just feel that to ask if we could just go all around the room and just say one thing you're thankful for. If you could just do that, mm -hmm. just get our voices. What one thing we thank God for? Can you start it? Um, let me see. I'm definitely thankful for plenty of food, not wanting for food. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm thankful mm -hmm. for I'm thankful for everything that I got from this, all all that we learned. There were some um new thoughts that came up that really fed my soul. So I'm thankful for our discussion mm -hmm. tonight. And just to think about it, I'm also thankful for seeing things that I didn't see before. It's mm -hmm. always I'm always Amazed that when you read something one time, you read it again, that's something different to you, depending on the season that you're in. So, mm -hmm. I'm thankful for that. Uh, for that mm -hmm. I'm thankful for that um, favor and protection. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm um, really, really grateful for the grace that has been bestowed upon me. So, grace right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful for my health, my family, my friends. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I'm thankful for that I can do it still good for the same chance. Things are messed up, we just to spray the things down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, I'm thankful for my mm-hmm. I'm thankful for having the ability to listen to the God. There you go. <laughs>
Anybody wants to unmute on the line and say thanks what they're thankful for, or if you want to put it in the chat. Mm -hmm. I will. I'm Can thankful. you guys hear me? Oh, yes. sorry. I am thankful to be alive mm. and thankful that ah. I am not afflicted with no major illness. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. ah. Yes, I'm thankful for Proverbs uh, 31 28 says her children arise up and call her blessed mm -hmm. and her husband also and he praises her so that woman across from you mm -hmm. there you go there you go that's, that's my virtuous woman yeah. all right and her grandchildren even call her blessed there you go amen, amen. Uh, and then we have Brittany. can you guys hear me yep okay great yes I am thankful for my friends that are in there. Because <laughs> I'm just saying, if it wasn't for Christy, I wouldn't be in Bible study. Mm. Um, I actually tried to, like with other places, I like, you know, like make excuses for why I can't come or whatever. But I'm just grateful that she um, never stopped inviting me. Mm. So. Yes, I'm very thankful, very thankful. And to all of you that are there that take the time out of your day to like teach us and also understanding, yeah. understanding. Mm -hmm. but thank you. Have a good night, everyone. All right. And just what, one more in the comment section from Bobby James. I'm thankful to be alive, thankful for my family and thankful I finally found God and gave myself fully to him. Amen, amen. All right. All right. We can bow our heads and pray. Thank you for um, lifting up uh, your thankfulness the lord says coming to a presence with thanksgiving so we want to be in your will by giving thanks lord god we thank you for this lesson tonight we thank you that for such a time as this we we learned we from this you spoken through so many of us tonight and we just pray that we will hold on to this meditate on what we need for our individual journey and we pray, God, that we will learn uh, from Ruth the examples of her obedience, her virtuous, mm -hmm. um, her servanthood, her respect for elders, her loyalty, oh God. We pray that we will learn from Boaz, his self-restraint, his godliness, mm -hmm. uh, his, his wisdom. Oh God, a man of God, we pray that we will learn from this and learn not to give up on you when things get challenging lord to remember to hang in there hang in there and trust in god in the name of jesus bless our travels as we get home we be with us lord and continue to keep us until we meet again in jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. amen. everybody have a blessed night thank you lord, thank you, lord. Bye. And next week is luke chapters one through six by the way the book of luke chapter one through six Okay. Let me Everybody have a good night.